Hello, my lovely people out there. That was rather dramatic, wasn't it? That countdown, woo, that caught me off guard then for a second. Just one moment, just one moment. Where are we, where are we? Let me just see what's going on here. Just one moment. Just one moment, just one moment. Where are we? There we go, okay, <laughs> okay, right. So tonight we're going to be discussing psychic development. Have you ever wondered why some people are psychic and some people are not? Well, basically, the answer to that is we are all psychic. Everybody is born with six senses. Um, usually by the time you're about seven, you start to lose that sixth sense. Usually that's because, you know, when you're young, you'll say to your parents, I've just seen something, I've just seen some colours or I've just seen a ghost. Or And usually um, an adult would say, it was so silly. There's nothing there because they don't want to scare you. But that is your sixth sense. That's your psychic abilities. And it's a shame because it starts to get, you start to think, oh, it's just my imagination. Oh, it's not real. When really it is real. So we are, we do all, we are all born with this. All that happens is your sixth sense lays dormant. That's all it is. It's just sleeping for a few years until you're ready to awaken it. Now, the other thing when it comes to psychic abilities is the psychic jargon. There's different names for different things. And a lot of people get a little bit intimidated because people say, I'm a clairvoyant. Oh, I'm not. I, I, I'm a I'm medium. I'm a psychic. And people go, oh, I don't know what I'm supposed to call myself. It's okay. It's all under the, the same umbrella. It just means that you're using your sixth sense. But I am going to start with explaining a little bit about the psychic jargon. And then I want you to just ask me any questions throughout the hour. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get through all of you. Um, I'm sure most of you would have had a psychic experience in your life. Um, it's so exciting. It's a lovely thing to have happen. It's been happening to me all my life. Um, and then I managed to um, develop it and channel it and, and use it to the highest good. Use it to the highest good. Always a good thing. So I just want to have a little look at all the different words that we use, the psychic jargon as such. Have we got no sound? Have we got a bit of a problem with sound? Have we got sound out there? Mm -hmm. You got you got sound, John. You've got sound, Vanessa. We're all okay. You can all hear me? You can all hear good. I was gonna say I could start again. I don't mind. <laughs> I can start again. Um, at least that's happened at the beginning. Okay, so psychic jargon. Here we here it is. So there's done that, it's turned on. Okay. Hi, Chloe. Chloe Talbot. Hello. Um, John Reese, Vanessa, my sister Vanessa. Now, I'm just going to talk about a little bit about the psychic jargon. So, as I call them, we have the clairabilities. You hear people saying clairvoyant, clairaudient. These are the clairabilities. So, the first one, clairvoyance, to see. So, very good for when it comes to using the old crystal ball like I do. Um, it shows, it. you can see. It comes from here, from your third eye, and that is the strength or the power or the gift of sight. Clairaudient. That is sound, which is I know we've been struggling with tonight, um, but it's to hear. So, um, you know, a lot of people do say to me, I, I keep having like a buzzing in my ears and I, I suffer with tinnitus and I've got this buzzing. Sometimes it's not tinnitus. Sometimes there's not nothing medical at all. It's literally... Just all that is, is your clear audience starting to kick in. That's all that is. So the next one, clear cognizance, to know. You hear a lot of people saying, I just know. I don't know what it is. I just know. I just knew that phone was going to ring. I knew that was going to happen. And, and there's no other words for it. You're not, you're not seeing anything. You're not hearing it. You just know. Um, most, I think 80% of psychics have got this. That's what it says. It's just that clear knowing. So cl clear cognizance, ESP, extrasensory perception. That's sixth sense working for you. Clear sentient, which is to feel. So sometimes you just feel, 
you can feel an impression on you um or you'll get a, a feeling of dread you hear people saying they go into a room and oh, God, it, oh it felt awful it felt oppressive well then you're using your clairsentient you know you might think you're not you've not got any of these but then suddenly you do walk in a room and you do think i can just feel it it feels negative in here or it feels happy and that is your clair clairsentient you're using it the next one clairaliance to smell some people can walk in a room and they will smell something really straight. They'll say, this room, it, 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 it smells funny. And it's actually, you're not smelling what it is now. You're smelling something from the past um, also. Or you may get like a nice smell, a nice perfume smell of flowers or roses. And that could be even from the mediumship side. That could be from the spirit world giving you that impression, giving you flowers and roses and, and giving you that that imprint. So, so you know, to smell. A lot of people can do that, Claire Aliens. Claire Gustans, to taste. Again, it can be your, your taste. You just get that funny taste in your mouth and it's not um, a mainstream taste. It's to do with, it's from the spirit world or it's, it's your psychic mind, your sixth sense, trying to tell you, trying to show you something. And psychometry. That is object touching. So you would hold an object in one hand and then you'd place your other hand over it and feel it and you start to feel a vibration. That vibration sends you is sending a message to you. So you, usually once you use your psychometry, one of the other clear abilities kicks in. So you, you're holding it and then you might get a funny taste in your mouth. You might hear a word. You might see an image. So usually with, with, the, with the psychometry, one of the other Claire's will kick in. So my question to you, have any of you ever had any of these experiences? Because a lot of the time you, you assume that you're not psychic and that you don't know how to use it, but and you think that this is like the norm when really any of these, any of these Claire abilities uh, are, are showing that you are opening up your sixth sense. Vanessa, my Vanessa there. Yes, you've had the flower smell and the taste. Oh, that's nice. That's an, and the taste, have you? Good. That's really good. Um, to have that, to have that, um, flowers is lovely. Um, it's when people start to smell all sorts of um, scary things, like um, Mark, who's with me here, uh, my partner Mark. Uh, when we went to Derby Jail, um, I walked into the cells there, um, the the old abandoned cells, and they didn't smell of of anything to me. They were just, you know, it was just looking like a, a scary cell whereas my partner was like oh my god I can't I can't stand the smell I have to stand I have to go outside um and it, it was it was his psychic smell that was kicking in so so sometimes they're not all nice they're not all flowers and but uh, that's nice that you've had that so so good has anybody else had anything any of these Leanne hello Leanne you've had several several of them um several of the Claire abilities because I mean, to use them, to use them accidentally, there's something called um, spontaneous clairvoyance. And it's when it just comes to you now and again, and you're not really expecting it and you don't know what to do with it. You don't know how to get it back again. So tonight, I'm hopefully I'm going to be able to show you a, a way of opening each clairability and and using it and actually developing it because it's all about de developing. Libby, you've had smoke. Have you seen smoke or you've smelt smoke? Because um, I know sometimes a lot of people see smoke and believe it or not, that is the spirit world. Of, that is the spirit world just before it's actually, they manifest. They come with something called a spirit veil. It's very nice and it's very smoky. Um, so when you see that, it's to do with um, the spirit world trying to draw close to you, their spirit veil. Tracy Astley, you keep smelling cigarette smoke for the last week or so, but nobody smokes, very odd. Perfect, that is, perfect. So basically, qu my question to you, um, is it you only that smells it, or does everybody? Because sometimes the spirit world draws in and the whole house can smell it. And think, oh, I don't smell cigarettes, the whole house will. Sometimes it's just yourself and it's your psychic mind trying to open up and um, it's giving you it's giving you that that 
Well, you'll have a few different impressions. You'll have the, the smell, being able to smell it, but you might also, like, you might be able to start to see it, see a, a bit of a smoky feeling. Um, sometimes I'll think, God, have my eyes gone funny? I think, no, it's just, it's the spirit veil forming. So I think that's great. That is definitely somebody trying to connect with you. John Reese, you've had the first one when the phone rings and you knew it was going to happen and smells. Yes, there's nothing worse than think I knew that was going to happen or you go into a place where I knew that person was going to say that to me. What what we need to do on the psychic side is to reach that moment before it happens. So it's all about I know the phone's going to ring and then the phone will ring because in hindsight, it's no it's no good in hindsight. So it's it's about reaching it beforehand. That's what psychic ability is all about. Seeing something beforehand, predicting it. Um, and then it, it gives you that foresight rather than high, hindsight. So um, I'm just going to go into a little bit more detail with the first Claire ability. Yeah. So I, when I talk about psychic senses, it often can mess up the computer which is what it's doing it often does this to me typical um okay so your clairvoyance to see so so the gateway chakra to see it's here it's your third eye this one here remember two weeks ago when we discussed chakras well if you did that if you opened up your chakras uh then you would could be starting to receive psychic alignment already because it's fantastic it's there your third eye there and the color purple so that's what it connects to, your clairvoyance, your colour purple, your third eye. Uh, when it comes to clairvoyance, always set your intent. So asking for your gift to be used for the greatest good. It's all about using your gifts for the greatest good. Visualisation. So look around you. Notice objects, colours, images. It's about seeing. So just look around your room, take it in, take in the detail. And the more observant you are, the more you're using your clairvoyance because it's all about seeing. It's what you are seeing, what you can see visually. Um, don't try too hard. Yeah, there's nothing worse than um, sitting there thinking, I'm trying so hard to see, looking in the crystal ball. Um, if I've got people in a class, um, like, you know, the olden days when we'd all actually be in a room together. <laughs> Do you remember those days? Um, I would have a big crystal ball in front of us. And I'd be saying, have a look in. What do you see? I always say the best thing to do is to just be a passive seer. Don't look, try and look into it because you're trying too hard. Um, so just look into it naturally and you'll start to see images forming um, and let go of ego. Yeah, it's not about you. It's not about you. Even though you're developing your sixth sense, it's about letting it come through you and just seeing what it, just seeing what you see. Uh, don't be scared of it neither. Um, and it's the first image. So. Whatever you see, you know, you can practice with a bowl of water. You can look into a bowl of water and then you'll just see an image and think, oh, what was that? Um, it's the first image you see that means something. When you start to look more, then your imagination kicks in. Then you think you've seen something, but you're not sure. And you, you, you send yourself mad. Um, the easiest way to do is to just catch the first image. And that is your, that is the true psychic ability. It's always the first image. And don't be scared of what you'll see. Let go of fear. A lot of people can do this. A lot of you out there can do this. And you'll look into a crystal ball and you go, oh, I'm scared. What will it show me? I always remember one customer coming to my room and I've got a huge crystal ball. And um, she looked into the crystal ball and she went, oh, something's happening. Something's happening to your crystal ball. It's swirling. Well, that's very exciting for me because that means they're starting to see an image. Um, so instead of her going with it, she blocked it out. She didn't want to know. She didn't want to see it. Well, actually, it was a shame because she could have then developed that and helped, but she didn't want to know. So definitely, so don't be scared of what you'll see. Let go of fear and just have a little quick look. And it's the first image that comes to you. You'll be amazed at what you can see. Clairvoyance is amazing. What you can see in even a, even in a glass of wine. If you're all drinking a glass of wine now, hold it up, <laughs> hold your glass of wine up and just look at the, the reflective glass because it will actually start to show you images. It'd be, you'd be quite amazed at what it shows you. So that is your clairvoyance. Have you, Libby Thomas, have you ever looked into a mirror 
and the image wasn't you and it was someone else yes okay so Libby that is that's called scrying and that's we're going to do a whole class on scrying because so much I could talk to you about scrying so when it comes to I use a black scrying mirror so it's a black mirror and that's a window to the spirit world but sometimes when you just glance into a mirror you'll see a different face and it's called it's when a spirit come actually starts to transfigure in front of you it's either called overshadowing transfiguration where you're actually looking into the mirror and you're seeing somebody else again don't be scared of it because they've found a way to connect to you it's very exciting so so, so see what they've got to say usually once you hold that link that's it you're away you've you've, you've managed to use it but again it's about being able to switch it on and switch it off because you can't go to bed with all your psychic mind wide open. So I often say it's good to imagine that your third eye is, is like a camera lens and you put the lens cap on at night. There you go. Lens cap on. That's it. Done. So as you can sleep properly, so you won't be disturbed, so you won't see images. But when you're ready to see images, lens cap off. Right. And you start to look around and start to focus on something using a psychic tool by focusing on something. And as you're looking at something, you'll start to see images. Even when I do the tarot cards, it's not just the cards that I'm reading. It's the image between me and the card. So when I'm holding the cards, there's a, there's, I can see the picture on the card, but there's an image forming here in between us. And that that's the psychic image. That's my clairvoyance. So um, you'll be quite amazed at what you, what you will see when you start to learn it. Tracy Astley. Your 12-year-old son, and you do, because he's very sensitive too. So you're both seeing... Um, was that the cigarette smoke? You're both uh, uh, concentrating on that cigarette smoke because that's brilliant. Um, and, it, and, and it's good that, you know, like I say, a 12-year-old, a lot of the time, you, you know, parents would say, don't be so silly, you're not seeing that. But to actually say to them, yes, you are seeing this. And what is it that you see? Ask them any questions. Uh, you're all you're starting to open it up. Years ago, they say, in all these ancient civilizations, like just like the ancient um, Egyptians when building the pyramids, we all used our six senses. It wasn't nothing to be scared of, and it wasn't anything special, really. It was your sixth sense, the same as you've got your first, your second, your third, your fourth, your fifth. That was your sixth. But because it's it's laid sleeping for so many years that now and again, people like myself who uh, use my sixth sense, you come to me for a reading because I'm using my sixth sense, but that doesn't mean that you haven't got a sixth sense. We've all got them. So it's great to develop it because you can use it in all aspects of your life and it raises your frequency. And we're all supposed to be on this earth to raise our, our frequency. So it's a good thing. Oh, what a scouse. Hello. Hi, Chris. Neither myself nor my wife smoke. But we often smell cigarette smoke when things are stressful. Ah, okay. We believe it's either my dad or her mom or dad. Strange but comforting. Always the same smell. We simply have a chat to them. Perfect. Chris, that's perfect. That's what you're supposed to do. Just have a chat with them. They're saying hello. They don't, you know, there's rules in the spirit world. And, and also there's a four second rule. Did you know this? Did you know about the four second rule? That sometimes when you see something or you see someone, you'll glance and then, you'll think, oh, it's gone. What was it? You don't, it's like the very first moment you look at it, you don't really register. There's a few seconds before you think, did I just see that? It's so as they don't scare you. That's really what it's all about. So when they're coming with smoke, that's their proof. That's their evidence that they're giving you. When you, when I first started reading that, when you said that, Chris, my, my strong feeling was that it was your spirit guide because when you need your spirit, you will have spirit guides, Chris, because you do paranormal investigations. So you, your guides will be there protecting you like bodyguards, taking you into these scary environments. And your, your spirit guides are there protecting you. So if you're feeling stressed or worried they, and you're smelling cigarette smoke, that I feel that that's your spirit guide. But, you know, your mom and dad can be your spirit guide. Um, spirit guides are humans that have now transitioned into the afterlife and are here for us to help us. So I think that's great. And you will feel that any time. You can feel that any time. But when it comes to the majority of the, the world, most of us will all feel it in October. 
when the veil is at its thinnest. Um, that is, that is, I mean, it's it is true. The veil that is that is between us, that's so quite thick. And in in the year, is it its thinnest on Halloween, which is why um you start to see more than you realize, smell more and taste more, and all your senses are heightened. It's it's uh, it's remarkable, really. So I'm gonna talk to you now a little bit. Oh no, actually, no, I'm gonna teach you. Um, a little bit more on the, still on the clairvoyance, aren't we? See, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Getting ahead of myself. Sorry. It's all right. I think, I think we have another on the... Oops. Yes, TV screen. Which is... Uh, just, we're just finding it. We're just finding it. It's a okay, so, bloke in the background. So with the, when it comes to your clairvoyance, um, there's ways of developing it. Obviously, there's so many different ways that I could be here all night on just the one. But one that I've always used all my life is um, to have a focal point, which is a TV screen. So in your mind, if you have this TV screen, uh, you imagine a, a cord of light connecting your TV to the centre of the earth. I know it sounds a bit odd, but it works. So you imagine this TV screen and there's a cord of light connecting the TV to the centre of the earth. Then you set your intent, asking for your gift to be used for the greatest good. And then ask a question. Just ask your TV screen of your mind a question and allow images to form on your TV screen. You may see colours or it may go black. If it goes black, that's quite exciting because it's about to open up then. Um, Black is a colour. So what I find is sometimes if it goes black, it then uh, it's like curtains come in the middle and it opens up. I also find that with crystal ball. It's quite amazing how you'll sort of ask a question. It goes black and then it starts to open up. The images may seem very brief. Yes, they are. Sometimes it's a flash. You think, oh, was that a bird? And you start to try and recollect what it was. Um, and then and then it's about deciphering the meanings as well. Uh, but they will enhance. And eventually you'll capture it. When I was a little girl, um, I used to see a TV screen on the left and that was somebody's past and then a TV screen in the front and that was their present situation and a TV screen on the right and that was where they were going in life. So I used to get the past, present and future all around me, these TV screens. It's very clever how it works. So always remember, ask a question. And even if you have to just close your eyes, just imagine this TV screen and you'll see something written on it. That's what it's for. That's what your sixth sense is for. And you will, and the answers are the truth. So all the answers you get will be the right answers. So that's um, how to develop your clairvoyance. There's also um, other ways. I think I have another slide here regarding cards. Are you all with me so far? Are you with me? The next, um, so we'll, we'll we'll move on. There was there was one more on the clair, clairvoyance, but that's okay. If we've lost it, that's no problem. Copy. That's it. So, and, and a very good exercise is um, to use a deck of cards. So you place three cards face down, just face down, that's all you need to do, face down, and then you focus on each card and then see what they are. Um, again, when I was learning tarot cards when I was very little, I used to just turn them all face down and then I'd think, right, what is this? And I'd see the back of the card at the front. So as I turn it round, then that is what I'd seen. So it's just a way of developing your clairvoyance. Um, again, don't try too hard. Let go of any ego. Um, allow the images to form gently. You may see colours. You may see um, the suits or the numbers. Pay attention to what it feels like when you're right, because this is the key to your awakening, and that is very true. So um, some people will say, when I see an image, I get a tingle. And every time they know that when they get the tingle, that they, that is correct. So pay attention to how you feel. Some people feel a little bit... Um, Motion sickness, that sounds a bit odd, but um, they'll look down and go, oh, I've just seen a picture, oh, that's a bit motion sickness then. That means they've got that right. So just pay attention. Every It's different for everybody. We all experience it different. 
but you can do it. So, um, so yeah, so put some cards down and then just look at them and see what the cards are without turning them over and then turn them over. Again, when I do my psychic development, I remember doing, I put something in an envelope and I send it around the class and then I'll say to people, try and see, like x-ray eyes, see through the envelope. And um, I remember one lady, she, she was so good. Um, she was getting everything right. She was spotting it all. And she said, why, why are you putting it in a, a see-through envelope? Why don't you put it in a paper envelope? Well, it wasn't a paper envelope, but her clairvoyance was so finely tuned she didn't even realize and she was looking at it as if it was a, a see-through envelope and that's what it'll feel like to you eventually nothing can be hidden um i don't mean you'll be able to see through walls but your clairvoyance will be so powerful that it'll be so clear you'll be amazed that there is even an envelope there you would literally it would look like it was see-through and then the other key to it is to accept your ability because once you accept it it'll grow stronger a lot of people don't believe in the self and or they would never accept it or it goes against religion i have a lot of people who have got fantastic six senses but they have a religion and it goes against the religion so they don't accept it but if you are just open and you want to accept it then it will develop stronger which is always a good thing so moving on to the next one if the slides will let me they're, they're playing up tonight these slides are so we're going to move on to clairaudient. Clairaudient. Can you remember what that one was? Clairaudient. It is to hear. Just trying to find the slides here. Oh, Chris, you've just said really interesting. Oh, thank you very much. Um, it's my lifelong. I love anything like this. It's, it's something I've done all my life. Uh, so Claire Audient. So if we just go back one, just just need to just go back one. That's just going straight to the exit. Very sorry about this. We will get there in the end. It's because the names aren't on. Yeah. Try it. These files aren't named. Right. You don't need the full name. I could just. There's one before that was there. Yeah. Just trying to find it now. We're just trying to find it to talk amongst yourselves. <clears throat> right. right. So your Claire audience is so, to hear. Yes. So your Claire. Claire audience comes from your throat chakra, um, believe it or not, and it's the colour blue. And with your Claire audience, you to set your intent, it's to use your gift for the greatest good. And when it comes to Claire audience, you have to listen to everything around you. We miss a lot. A lot of the time, we don't listen to everything. We we miss things. Um, so if you literally sit in a room and just listen to the sounds, is there any creaks? You'll know about this, Chris, when you're doing investigations. Is there a creak? Is there a footstep? Is there a sound? Um, a very good way of practicing this is to go for a walk in the woods, a walk in nature, listen to the leaves rustling in the trees, listen to sticks breaking behind you, listen to werewolves. Oh, no, sorry, that's another class. Um, so everything that you're hearing is, is practicing your clairaudient. Again, don't try too hard. Let go of ego. And don't be scared of what you can hear. Because, again, a lot of people, you they won't open up because they're a bit scared. I must say that um, when I'm doing readings to people, I open up to my fullest so I can hear, see, feel, taste everything about that person. But when I do an investigation, I do tend to think, oh, I don't know if I dare open up too much because do I want to hear what they're going to say? And and I do, I do get a little bit scared with it. So. So don't be scared. Um, don't be scared of your clear audience. Just, just allow your ears to hear, hear what's going on. And then when you do ask questions and say, is there anybody there? You'll hear it. I tend to pick up on the same as an EVP. So on a paranormal investigation, you can pick up um, different um, 
sounds that will come through on the EVP. So I could say, is there anybody there? And on the EVP, you'll hear yes. Um, no one in the room will hear it, but I hear it. I always say there's like a ghost frequency and it's the same as the EVP. It's like I pick it up. I can hear it. And I think it's just because I've got a finely tuned um, Claire audience, uh, which is what you can do too. We can all do it. So a um, little exercise for, <laughs> we're about to find the slides again. Another exercise for, yes. So to exercise your Claire audience is to focus on your throat chakra and swallow. So just focus on it, feel it, be aware of it, swallow, be aware of your throat chakra. Listen to the sound that your swallowing makes. Imagine light penetrating into your ears. And then imagine that you're sitting on a big chair with speakers at either side of your ears. And then ask a question. And the first sound you hear is your answer. It's quite unbelievable. Obviously, it's, it's difficult with me chatting and you can hear all this. But basically, if you're just you just sit there on a chair and imagine those speakers at either side, ask that question and that sound will come through. And that sound is your answer. You've just had an answer to it. Hi, Kelly Kennedy. I've just seen you saying hello there. Hello. Um, yes. Yeah, so that's what you will start. That's what that's the best way for, to do a Claire audience exercise. OK. Has anyone ever had any clairaudient sensations? Um, I mean, even now, if you just literally put your, if you just literally asked a question and just seen what's the first thing you hear, because it might not even be in the form of a voice. Sometimes it's not your voice. It sounds like it's here. It's somebody else's voice. Sometimes it sounds like it's in your head. You know, the voices in your head. Or well, sometimes they are actually psychic voices. Um, Many, many years ago, just, uh, uh, sorry, Chris, I know you're asking me a question there, but many years ago, um, a lot of the psychics were put in asylums, and I'm going back, you know, the Victorian ages, um, because they were hearing spirits, but a lot of them didn't believe that, and so they were put, sent away, which is which is very, very sad, uh, when really all they were using was their clairaudience. So sometimes when you do hear voices, um, it could just be your clairaudient kicking in. Anyway, let's come back to you, Chris. I saw your question there. So you wear glasses and you genuinely believe that your hearing is sharper because of that. Adam, who is my Haunted Scouse co-host, has the sharp eyes, but his hearing lags. So you concentrate on hearing. Yeah, that's great. You're working together really well then. You're complementing each other and you know where your strengths are. And they are your strengths. So when it comes to your six senses, you know, your seeing and your hearing, that is all sorry that yeah so that is your first and your second and your third sense but when it comes to the clear abilities the psychic side of it then maybe you're picking up a little bit more than you would be usually so it's exciting Vanessa you hear whispers and whistles more recently yeah whispers they say are angels it's very angelic that is um when I'm doing my healing uh, the amount of people that have said to me afterwards I'll be I'll be doing a um healing on somebody and they'll say to me afterwards what is it that you were whispering halfway through? And, and I have to say, I, I'm not whispering anything. It's not me. I don't whisper. I don't speak. It's coming from somewhere else. It's your own psychic sixth sense opening up and whispers that little, just catch it a little bit, is the spirit world talking to you. And a lot of the time, people that go to, um, I'm going to say people that go to sleep. Yes, this, for us insomniacs, you know, there's people out there that go to sleep. Um, but yeah, the people that go to sleep, um, sometimes you'll tend to sleep talk and you'll wake up because you, you, you're answering someone. You, you, you say, oh, I don't know what, I was just mumbling in my sleep and you roll over and go back to sleep. But actually, no, you were having a conversation. That's the best way the spirit world can get through to you. So they, they, they've they give up on trying to all your six senses. So they actually just come to you in your sleep. Um, and a lot of the time, those whispers, that little ghost frequency, um, you will hear in day-to-day -day life. And, and that is very angelic. It's a nice thing, that is. It's a nice thing. Hiya, Kelly. Um, you used to hear voices <laughs> when you were between 11 and 15, but it scared you. So you blocked it out. And that's what happens. That's what happens. People get scared. Go, oh, God, I've just heard. I heard it tonight. 
where I'm based here at St. James, it's an old Victorian school and there's nobody, nobody in here. And I heard two men talking and I just turned around to see who was behind me. So yeah, I heard the voices. Um, so yeah, so Kelly, so that's what happens. You're hearing it. It's, you're doing it. It's working. And then you think, no, 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 and switch off. And that's basically what, that is what we all do. It's, it's normal. To, to switch off. You go to school, you learn how to do your maths, you learn how to do English, you, you grow up, you learn how to become a parent, but you don't understand what happens when somebody's just hearing voices with no bodies there, just voices. So you naturally switch off, but really it's your, it's your psychic mind kicking in. And I know, Kelly, that you have got a very good psychic mind. So um, it's time for your awakening. That's what this is. So let's talk about another clairability, shall we? Let's talk about, let's talk about, if my psychic senses are right, we're going to talk about clairsentient, that's the one, clairsentient, to feel. So the gateway chakra for this is your sacral, which is the colour orange. Your sacral is just below, if you remembered from two weeks ago, all your chakras, and it's just below your belly button. That's where your sacral is. It's where your inner child is held. Um, and feeling internal and external sensations. So you'll feel, you might feel it inside. You just might feel feel scared. It's a class, it's class sentient. You're feeling something, you're feeling scared. But is it your fear or is it someone else's? Because a lot of the time, um, when I again, when I'm doing readings to someone, I might suddenly think, oh, God, I feel, feel a bit scared. And it's because they are feeling nervous or scared. So I always try and relax them as they're having a reading because they might come in feeling nervous. And then I'm feeling that, which another word for that is empathic. See, there's all these words. It all comes under one umbrella as, you know, your sixth sense. It's all your sixth senses. But yes, um, feeling um, internal, external sensation. Check in with your feelings. So see what it is that you're feeling. Think, what is it that I'm feeling? Where am I feeling this? Start to um, be aware of what you're feeling. Be aware of your body and the space around you. And then again, don't be scared of what you'll feel. Some people uh, will feel, when, when it comes to the spirit world, I know we're not doing a mediumship class. We will do that um, soon. But sometimes it's like when you close your eyes and then somebody's come to stand next to you you sort of you, you look don't you because you feel them next to you um that is what clairsentient is it's just when somebody you can feel them very strong and again if uh, for anyone that does do ghost hunts paranormal investigations you will feel more than anything because you'll go into a room and you'll feel a sense of dread you'll feel worried you'll feel you'll feel a bit sick you'll feel butterflies all that's clairsentient so you're definitely using it you are using it um Right, let's see, maybe a little exercise. Do we have a little exercise on there? Yeah, so, okay, so for Claire Sentient, the way to, a very good exercise is to look at a photo and then see what it is that you feel. Do you suddenly feel small, tall? Do you feel like a female or a male? You'll feel different. Um, take notes of your sensations. Is there something going on in your external body, like goosebumps, tingles, temperature change is a big one, temperature change, or internally? So you've got your butterflies, get twinges, emotions, spasms. Um, for best results, cover your eyes and ears and just feel, uh, which is, you know, blindfolded. I also, again, I can't do it um, on online like this, but usually if I was with you in person, I'd be teaching you how to feel feel somebody's aura which you can do at home you just blindfold yourself and literally start to walk towards someone and it's really amazing because suddenly your hands will feel all tingly as you're going into their aura and they might feel warm cold hard it might be a very strong aura it might feel fluffy and soft and then as you as you go down that person you can if you had four people in front of you and you were blindfolded and you were just going towards them to feel that aura you, you can know who it is by what you're feeling. And also, because you, we're blinded with vision, you know, we, we look at someone or we might think they look attractive, they must be a nice person. But then if you were to just close your eyes and just feel them, not that you're going to just go up to a stranger and just feel them, especially in this day and age, but if you did, you might suddenly go, oh, God, 
a sick feeling then that they are not right. So when it comes to feeling, which again is like psychometry, when it comes to feeling an object, um, you'll feel it inside. It just it's it's like a warning bell. Um, so by using all of your senses together, you can you can literally combat anything in the world. You can see psychically, hear psychically taste psychically, smell psychically, you can do it all. And you'll raise your vibration and you will live on a much higher vibration than you were prior to not using your sixth sense. So, and there's there's all different ways. You can you can open up your, uh, your sixth sense with amethyst. I've got an amethyst crystal here. Wherever I am in the world, there's always an amethyst crystal nearby. I sleep with one under the pillow. Um, you can have um, you can wear them on your necklace so it's connecting to your third eye. But it's very, very powerful. When it comes to amethyst, it's very powerful for your sixth sense. So crystals take the hard work out of it because they just open up your, your sixth sense without even realizing it. So shall we take some questions and then we can do a little exercise? Um... We're going to do her first, but we'll do a little, we'll do some questions. So, hi Tracy, you feel spirits, you rarely see or hear, but when you feel it, you know that they're around. You get a lot of pressure headaches when they need me. Oh yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, headaches is a big thing when it comes to the spirit world, because again, it's, it's this sixth sense. If you're not opening up your psychic ability, you will feel, you will suffer with migraines and headaches. And sometimes you feel like you've got a vice around your head. It's really tight. You think, what's wrong with me? And it's because your six, your third eye wants to open. So a lot of people that suffer with headaches are just not opening up their psychic mind. If they could just open up their psychic mind, they feel completely different. And um, when it comes to feeling the spirit world, that's exactly right. You can feel it as a headache. Absolutely. Absolutely you can. Um, and feeling is just, is your strength. Some people are strong, have stronger strengths than others. Mine's definitely clairvoyance, which is why I've always been um, into my crystal balls. And um, But then some people would be just clairaudience. It depends. We all have different strengths. Um, so, haunted scouse. Your wife has a gift, but she closes off to it. She visits places with you for a recce and then warns you of something negative. Yeah, yeah. Then arms me with her mum's cross when we go to film the episode. Brilliant. Okay, so her mum's cross is a talisman, is a is a protection for you. We should all have a protection on. Um, being scared of a gift is completely normal. It's completely normal um, because we're, we're, we're told to be scared of it. I think, you know, years ago when I was at school, a long time ago, I did say to my teacher, you know, you know, sir, I think everything paranormal will be normal in years to come. You'll be teaching maths, English and telepathy. It'll all be normal. And he said, get out of this class. Um, he wasn't very impressed with me for saying that. But it's true. And I do stick to that. I just think that we're discussing now how to open up psychic development, you know, how to develop your psychic skills. But soon, soon it'll all be normal. Everyone will be born with the six senses and they'll stay they, they will be learning more. We will be using telepathy. We will be using our um, clear abilities um, in situations in life in, in all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's funny, Chris, about your wife um, giving you the lucky talisman. So um, it's nice because it, it's it's protective. Um, salt's a great protector. I always have salt in my pockets and all sorts of things, uh, all sorts of pr protective stuff when I'm, when I'm out and about uh, doing investigations because you don't know what you're opening up to. So it's good. I'm very pleased that she looks after you. That's that's good. It's good to hear. Hello, Gary. <laughs> Just seeing Gary feels there. Good evening, madam. Hello, Gary. How are you? Um, Tracy, how can you open up? Because you closed everything off when you were about 11. You used to see things that happened in the future that wasn't nice when it happened. You were scared. Now you're not, but you feel lost as how to welcome it all back in. This is how you do it. Everything, all these slides tonight, um, what, what, this is how you do it. So your clairvoyance, your TV screen. That's what you need to do. It's practice, really. So you just ask a question and have a look at your TV screen and see the first, the answer will be written on it or, or an image will be written on it. Practice with the cards face down. Practice your meditation. I actually do a very powerful 
um, psychic development hypnosis, which I can put on one on a link uh, tonight. I'll put it on the comments afterwards, and then you can listen to it because it helps you to open up to go to the enlightenment to open your psychic side. It's really powerful. So I will share that tonight on the comments. It's really really good. It's really powerful, and that's how you do it. That is how you do it by listening to that hypnosis, by doing these little exercises, you will completely open it up. Um, I've just checked, I've just seen a um, question there off Gary. I just want to see that a bit clearer. Hi, Gary. You love the intelligence of spirit, so do I. Development classes are amazing to be part of. They are. And you know what? We're all still developing. I've known a few people that will say, well, I've been to six classes now, so that is, I don't need any more. It's good practice it's all about practicing and keeping that channel open keeping that link open so yes the more you practice the better you will be um you can be good or you can be amazing you can have finely tuned clear abilities how cool is that so i just think it's it's good to keep practicing keep the crystals on you keep it all open um there's there's so many different techniques to opening up your senses um and i just think talking about it will open them up everybody on here tonight it, whether you've asked a question or not it's all going into your mind now you're listening to to my voice in your mind listening to my voice feel like i'm going into hypnosis here um and it will start to open up your psychic mind, your six senses being awakened. It's like I'm prodding it and it's starting to be awakened. And then once it's awakened, the world's your oyster. So out of the little chat we've had regarding your clear abilities, are you ready to do a little psychic exercise? Now, what you need to do, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a photograph. Completely clear your mind now, okay? Don't worry about getting the answer right don't worry about anything just keep calm and i'm just going to show you this photograph okay so take a look at this lady what do you feel is there anything going on inside internally have you got goosebumps have you got a temperature change anything that you're feeling what do you see are you seeing any colors are you seeing something nice, something bad? What do you hear? Is this is there a word, a name, a date? Have you got a date for for this person? Any impressions that come to you? Any smells, words? Was she good, or was she bad, or is she still good, or is she still bad? So I'll just leave you just for a few moments so you can just concentrate. But it's the first thing that comes into your head. After that, anything is your imagination. Okay, I can see some of you starting to write things down. So yeah, write them in the comments. Write them in the comments. Why not? Yeah, we'll put we'll put a few things of what you've thought. Yeah. I know John Reese, you've seen it before. I know you have. You've seen her before, haven't you? So Keith, hiya Keith. You think she's evil. And 1860s come to mind. Okay, excellent. You know, um, also, whether you get it right or wrong, it doesn't matter because it's all about practice as well. That's the that's the important thing. Mark Williams, you think she's bad. Okay. Seriously, you've got a cold breeze around you. Oh, we don't want to. We don't want to um, bring the spirit of her in. We just want to. Yeah, I can imagine that. See, that's your spirit guides. That is Chris all around you. That's your spirit guides connecting around you. Hi, Steve. You feel sadness, but as you are connecting, your neck is feeling like it's been strangled. Really, really. Okay. Miss Dreamcatcher, is that my Susie Angel there? Um, sneaky and creepy. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, Tracy, you think mother, but on the outside to others, but not so much behind closed doors. Okay. Okay then, so shall we, Gary, you've got children around her. Oh, what else did Gary say? You're just putting wood on the, oh, you're just putting wood on your, on your fire. <laughs> Or her fire, <laughs> um, children around her. Okay, 
Right, okay, well, I'll give you some answers on here. We'll give you the answers. <clears throat> She's bad. She was bad. So her name was Constance Kent. So four years ago, um, um, Francis Kent went missing from his home in Wiltshire on the night of June the 29th, 1860. Did someone say 1860? Yeah. Oh, a spot on. His body was later found in the outhouse. His throat was slashed. Throat? Oh, my God. The child's nursemaid, Elizabeth Goff, was suspected of the murder. But then the 16-year-old half-sister, Constance Kent, was arrested. She did not go to trial. However, she was released. The family moved away and Constance was sent to school in France. Five years later, Constance Kent confessed to the murder during confession with a priest. She turned herself into law enforcement and pled guilty to the murder. Keith? Wow, that's spot on, absolutely spot on. Now, again, it doesn't matter, that's spot on. It doesn't matter if you're, you're not spot on. It's just, what, what was your first thing? I mean, everybody, as soon as you looked at her, you all had a feeling, but then you think, what if I'm wrong? Oh. And then you start to change it. It's just that first thing, that first thing you all probably felt was dread. Um, so, wow, that was, um, that was really good. On your fire. I'm just seeing, I'm seeing, yeah, Gary, you're putting logs on your fire. Okay, good. That's a good thing to do. Um, so, yes, a mother to the outside, but not so much behind closed doors. Absolutely. Very good. Right. Now you're in that frame of mind. Keep your psychic mind open. We're going to do another one. Again, first impression that comes into your head. Just the first impression. Take a look at that photo. What do you feel? What do you see? What do you hear? Any impressions coming to you? Smells, words? Dates, any dates, Keith? <laughs> Poor Keith, pressure on now. Pressure's on you, Keith. John Reese, keep that shh. I know you know this. <laughs> There'll be new ones, John. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a Patreon site where I have people that subscribe to my club. So we're all part of my club. It's brilliant. I've got my patrons, which I love them. And I do things like this with them. I do psychic exercises and we do little Zoom classes and things. I know I've done this a few times. So, so some of my patrons on here, John, John Reese, uh, has seen this before. You should all become patrons. We'll be doing this all the time. Right, so Mark, you're feeling sad, okay? Sadness, yeah, yeah, good. Keith, good, 1920, okay? Chris, help, good, saviour, very good. Doctor, well, Gary, a doctor, well educated. You're all blowing me away tonight, you know that. <laughs> You're all doing very well, actually. Um, good. So are you? how are you receiving your messages? Are you getting words? Are you seeing? Is it something you feel? Or is it clear knowing? Are you just, do you just know? You know, these are, because you have to take note of how you feel, how, when you're receiving these messages, take note how you feel when you're receiving them. Kelly, did he invent something? You're getting a teacher or professor vibes. Right, okay. Okay. Mark's got a pain in his head. Brilliant. Okay, then. So, shall we give you some answers? Are you ready for this? Drum roll. Are you ready for this? Ready, ready. This is Dr. Thomas Barnardo. So, he's good. Absolutely. He's very good. Doctor, very good. So he was, um, he was the founder and director of the Homes for the Poor and Deprived Children. From the foundation of the first Bernardo's home in 1867 to the date of Bernardo's death, nearly, nearly 60,000 children have been taken in. Although Bernardo never finished his studies in London Hospital, he used the title of doctor and later secured, um, well, uh, later secured his doctorhood and his legacy lives on today. Right, can I just say, Kelly Kennedy, C absolutely fantastic mark williams i can see where the sadness come in because he really really wanted to he was he was sad he was frustrated because he was trying to do so much good in this world 
Um, Keith was spot on again. He was good. Yeah, spot on. Absolutely spot on. You were all really good. And Gary, doctor, well educated. Gary, I wouldn't expect anything less from you. <laughs> spot on. Um, you were all really good. You were all really, really good with that. You surprised me. Uh, that's really, really good. Now, that is just all we've done tonight for the last hour is talk about developing your sixth sense. Can you imagine doing this all the time? talking about it, thinking about it, developing it, practicing the little television in your mind, that little television, remember that slide, the little television, and seeing all these objects and words and impressions, you'll all be so good at it. Your channel, it's all about the right brain. The more creative you are, the more intelligent you are, the more creative you are, the more psychic you are, simple. People that are analytical, accountants, things like that, will find this harder. People that are artists and music musicians and creative people will find this easier because your, your psychic mind comes through your right brain. So um, I am so impressed with you. Um, I'm very, very impressed with you. Gary, oh, your guide told you. I think that's cheating. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. That's fantastic. You see, that's fantastic. Lots of people want to get to the stage where their guide told them. They 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 want oh, your team. Oh, your team of guides. That's lovely, that is. Gary, that's so lovely. Everybody wants to get to that moment where they can connect with their guides. And I am doing um I am doing some videos on this for my patrons at the moment about how to connect with the spirit guides because that's what they're there for to connect with. And that's what they do. They tell you things. So, um, well done. I'm dead, dead impressed with all of you. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to do another little experiment before we leave tonight. I could do this all night with you all, you know, but there's that many different things I could do. But um, I just want to go to the Zena cards now. Zena cards are the most amazing cards ever. Um, they've been used since the 1930s for psychic experiments and developing your ESP. They're known as Zena cards or ESP cards. Um, they, I had my own made for me. Can you see them there? Oh, yeah. There, my partner Mark made me them. It's designer. And he made me these, my little Heavenly Helen cards here, because I love them so much. I just love Zena cards. I absolutely love them. Um, I've practiced with these forever, where somebody goes to, into a room, puts one on their forehead, sends it, sends it to the group, and then the group try and pick it up. So that's what I'm going to try and do tonight with you. So I'm just, I want you to just look at the screen and just look at them. So you've got your yellow circle, your red cross, your blue wavy lines, your black square, your green star. Again, don't be too worried. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I can see Gary. Gary, I'll sit back now and just watch, lol. I love that. Honestly, I love the fact your guides told you. That's so cool. Um, right. I'm just going to... Okay, Gandalf. <laughs> um, right. I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling. Okay. I have chose... I have chosen. I have chosen. Which one have I chosen? Look at the cards. Look at them. It's the first one that stands out to you. It's not, don't use your imagination. Don't, don't, don't read into it too much. Just what you feel. You don't have to write them in the comment. You can write them in the comments, but you don't have to. I'll just turn them around now and we'll see what we pick up. Okay. <clears throat> Ready? People are starting to write in the comments. Okay, so I'm just going to give you the answer and we'll, and we'll do this because the first thing that comes into your head, thank you for that, Lisa. Thank you, Green Star. Thank you. This one was, no, Gary will know this. So this one was hmm. Blue Wavy Lines. You just know that everyone's sitting there going, damn, I knew that. I knew it. Blue? Mark Williams has put blue. Well done, Mark. Well done. Right, I'm going to choose another. I'm going to choose another, okay? Gonna choose another Kelly. <laughs> Kelly Kennedy. Oh, it should be taking this class. Well done, girl. Well done. Proud of you. I knew you'd know it. I knew you would know it. Very good at this. Okay, I've just chosen another. First thing that comes into your mind. First thing. Okay, I'm sending it. I'm sending it. I'm sending it to you. 
I'm now going to turn it over. You ready? 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 It was blue again. That was just a complete fluke, that was. Um, but it was the blue wavy lines yet again. Okay. Right. I'm going to do it again. Look, I know you've probably got lives and you've got other things to do, but I'm keeping you here for a little while, okay? Okay, right. I've chosen another. Look at look at the card and try and see it clairvoyantly. Or here, ask which card I've chosen, see what you get here, or what you feel, or clair knowing. First thing that comes into mind. You've probably got that many different things coming to mind now. You change it. But the first thing. Okay. We've got the yellow circle. Oh, and can I just say something very important, which I didn't say. If I did this 10 times, then the law of chance says that you will get one right. If I if if you get two right, no, I think the law of chance says you can get up to two right. If you get three right, then that's not chance anymore. That's starting to be tuning into something. If you get four right, you really are tuning into your psychic mind. Five, unbelievable. Fifty percent right is unbelievable. Six and seven, oh my god, anything higher, I mean. That's it. You, you know, you could be working for the military <laughs> because it's absolutely spot on to get more. More than four is spot on. So that's two. We've, that's three we've done. Three. Right. Number four. Try, try and keep count of what you've what you've got. OK. Got one. Got one. Number four. I've got one. Got it. Got it. Got it. Sending it to you. I'm sending it to you. Da -da. Red Cross. OK. Red cross. Well done. What's that? Number four. Number five. Four. Number five. This is number five. Okay. Number five. I'm sending it. I'm sending it. It is the yellow circle. Well done, well done, well done. I'll keep going. Number six. Number six. Just keep, just the first thing that comes into your head. Just keep looking at those. And it's the first thing that comes into your head. Ready? Black square. Number seven. Oh, who's getting these right here? Who's getting these right? This is number seven. Number seven, okay? I'm sending it out. I'm sending it out. Oh, my God, John, he's got that right, didn't he? I'm sending it out. Mark Williams, you're really good. Are you a, are you a psychic, Mark? Do you do this? Right. Sending it out. Sending it out. Was this number eight? Seven. Black square. That was number seven. Black square, number seven. Black like bingo. Okay. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. No. <laughs> number eight. Sending it out. Sending it out. Sending it out. Receive my words. Ready? Blue wavy line, blue wavy line. And last but not least, last one, last push. All you've got to do is just feel the impression that comes straight to you, okay? I haven't chose it yet, so wait. I haven't chose it yet. <laughs> right. I'm thinking it. I'm sending it now. I'm sending, 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 sending. Final one. Okay. Yellow, yellow circle. So, so, who got, <laughs> who got one right? 
I can't. I'm used to doing Zoom when I can see people's hands, putting their hands up. Um, did anybody get more than three correct? Did anyone get more than three correct? Put your scores on the doors, baby. Did you get more than four correct? John Reese, you got two. Well done. Well done. They say it's the it's the it's the you know through chance that the the law of chance you can get up to two right. But that was really good because you got two right. Oh, and another thing, for anyone that didn't get any right, got nothing whatsoever. That is also very psychic because that is known as negative ESP because you, the chances are you would get one right. So there's something going on if you've got none of them right. So if you've got nil, you're very psychic. If you've got 10, you're very psychic. Mark Williams, you've got five. That's really impressive. Are you, what, what do you do? I, I, do you use your right brain? Are you creative? Are you an artist? Do you like music? Are you, cause you must, you're, you have to be, because you're open to all this. Um, Tracy, you got two. Well done. Well, well done. Um, Lisa, Lisa Griffin, you got two. Well done. Keith got none. Keith, if you got none, that's again, negative ESP. So that is completely, that's, you're on a different level there because that means you're very psychic. It's like you may as well have got 10 out of 10 right to get none right. Because the, the, the chances are you would, law of chance would say you'd get one or two. So that's really interesting, that is. Do you know what? You've all done really well. I'm absolutely, I'm so impressed with you all. I'm so impressed because you're all open-minded. You've listened and you're open-minded. And now all you've got to do is go through all the little exercises, like with the TV screen and sitting there pretending that you're on your chair and you've got the speakers at either side. This is all for your psychic development. It's really, really good. When it comes to the psychic mark, you like music, but you haven't got a clue. <laughs> but you've not got a clue. You like music. Great. Right? That's good. That's your creative mind. Um, um, I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. You've been brilliant. Um, but yeah, there's lots of different things. I do Zoom classes, you know. I do my own Zoom classes, which I can uh, you can join in on. And I've got my patron site, which you can join. And it's all about discovering the psychic realms together it's all about that because you know you don't have to it's not a serious thing it doesn't have to all be serious and with your ego and it's all about letting go of that having fun and just seeing what comes into your mind um which is what eddie just said there mark williams zoomed in and saw the card reflect in your eyes did you now did you <laughs> no i know you didn't really do that um yeah, well done. I think you've been brilliant. I'm just going to summarise this. So I've just got a little bit of a summarise. Last few words, as they say. <laughs> Fun night. Thank you, Gary. I'm pleased that you've got your logs on your fire and that you're keeping nice and warm and sitting back with your guides. And, and I'm pleased you've been able to join in. That's brilliant. So... To summarize, there is no rush for psychic development. Do it at your own pace. A lot of people try and rush and go, right, that's it. I'm a clairvoyant now. I'm a psychic now. Just There's no rush. There's no rush. It can be a life's long mission to, to learn this. Um, do it at your own pace. Always use it for the greater good. Don't expect an easier life path because we all have to learn by our mistakes. You know, just because I've done this all my life since a child, but it doesn't mean that I've been able to cut corners. I've had to experience grief, heartbreak, upset, disappointment, the the, the lot. Um, I've had to experience that because that that's what makes me who I am. But it's a great thing when it comes to being able to help others. So I can help others. I can guide you and your path. Um, and it's just a, a good little tool to have to be able to have your sixth sense open. Um, always remember it's the first thought that comes into your head so I bet a few of you there got a little bit of you know a red cross but you didn't say that and then it was the red cross so it's always the first thing that comes into your head um, practice and the stronger it becomes definitely have fun with it enjoy it um, psychic development is a journey and the wonderful thing is with journeys is that they go on and on and on so thank you thank you thank you very much a good laugh. Oh, I said it's a good laugh. Yeah, you have to have a good laugh. 
You have to have a good laugh, don't you, Chris? You can't all be serious. It can't be all serious. You know, when you do investigations, a lot of people do it in a very serious way, and it's all very serious as they're tuning in. Whereas really, spirit love laughter. They love, it raises the energy, and spirit world come through on laughter, on, on laughter waves. So I always say, you know, the happier you are, the more of a laugh you have. That's why pubs, if when people, you know, in the olden days when we used to go out drinking in pubs and have a laugh, that's why the spirit world come down more in pubs than anywhere because everybody's laughing and forgetting the, the inhibitions and laughing and the, the spirit world join in on that. So it's a very good way of tuning in. Anyway, I will love you all and leave you all. I'm going to put in the comments my YouTube psychic development, which is really powerful, and you can all listen to that. It's It's fantastic. You're right, Mark. You have to have fun on investigations. You do. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And um, I love you all. And I will see you all in two weeks' time. I don't know what the next one's going to be. I will be um, doing the, the big festival on at the weekend. I'm going to be doing chakra balancing again. And, um, and then a couple of weeks after that, um, I might do old-fashioned readings like palmistry, tea leaves, that sort of thing. Yeah, that might be exciting, eh? Thank you very much. Mwah. Take care. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.